Okay, so in this video, what I'm going to do is just to quickly overview how we would go about installing Lubuntu onto VirtualBox. So I'm doing this on a Windows machine uh, at home, uh, and the critical difference, I guess, really between my setup at home and your setup is that instead of getting the Lubuntu image directly from the Blade server, uh, the network drive in the college, uh, I have the Lubuntu image already copied over uh, onto a folder on my desktop. So you can see that there are two folders here. One is uh, for images, which is uh, the actual ISO file that we're going to use. Uh, that's the installation media. Uh, and we're going to have that. Uh, we'll reference that later on when we actually go ahead uh, to install the uh, operating system. Uh, and then the other folder that I'll be using is a folder just set aside for virtual machines. Uh, so this is where the actual details of uh, the virtualized computer system uh, that we create, that's where that will be stored. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, go to VirtualBox Preferences and I click on that uh, and I specify the folder that I want to actually store my virtual machines in. So you can see by default it's set to a folder on my uh, uh, on my desktop or on my uh, in the uh, in my user folder in Windows, uh, I probably don't want that. Uh, I'm going to set it to my desktop folder, uh, which I drew your attention to a second ago. Uh, if you were doing this in the college, you would set it to a folder on your portable hard drive so that you could take the machines about with you in the college, and also take them home with you and work with them like that. So the next thing I'm going to do once I've set that folder is I'm going to click on the new button uh, and I'm going to give my uh, uh, virtual machine a name uh, which is uh, a combination uh, of the date uh, and uh, the year. Uh, that's just so that I can keep that separate and straight from all the other virtual machines I'll be creating. Uh, and because the version of Lubuntu that we're going to use is 32-bit, I make sure that the machine type is set for 32 bits. I click OK. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is set the virtual memory. Uh, I have a lot of memory installed in this machine, so I could make it any arbitrary size. But I think uh, 4096 megabytes is probably a reasonably decent size uh, for the uh, virtual machine. Uh, the next screen is for the size of the hard disk uh, or for the type of hard disk. I go with the defaults, which are virtual hard disk. Uh, uh, the next screen is about the type of file I want to use. I go in, I go with the default, click through. Uh, and then the next sc uh, screen is about the, the actual size of the disk, uh, which will be dynamically allocated. Again, that's the default setting, and I go with that. Uh, and then I go with the actual file location and size, uh, and these are already set to some kind of initial default value and that's fine as well. 10 gigabytes is fine. Uh, one of the things that you can do here is just if you mouse over the little icon over here you'll see that that lets you specify a location for your hard disk. Now I think based upon previous experience that it's a good idea to use the same folder for all of your virtual machines uh, that has the virtue of consistency and it stops uh, VirtualBox getting confused. Uh, you can experiment with that, maybe your experience will be different to mine, but I've had problems with it in the past. But in any case, given that we set the uh, preferences for the virtual machine folder before we actually went to start installing this machine, there is no problem. Next thing we do is click Create, and you can see now that we've created a virtual machine, uh, and the next thing to do is to actually go ahead and install the operating system on it. So the first thing I do is click Start, and that causes the virtual machine to boot up. And I'm prompted immediately by VirtualBox for an installation uh, or startup disk. Uh, VirtualBox realizes that this virtual machine has no operating system uh, installed on it. So I could go with a, an actual physical DVD, uh, but I'm not going to. I'm going to actually instead look for uh, the ISO image that I drew your attention to a second ago, uh, which is stored inside the folder images. So I select that, I click Open, and then I click Start. So as soon as I do that, uh, we'll immediately see that we're into the installation uh, of the 
uh, the installer program of Lubuntu. So the first thing to do is to select uh, my installation language. I'm using the cursor keys to do this. Uh, and I want to make sure that I do this before the wee timer expires because I think people have had problems with the timer running out and then the installer program crashing. So I select English, uh, press return, and then again, I'm presented with another menu which gives me different options uh, in regard of how I might choose to uh, experience Lubuntu. Uh, but I go for the second option, which is install, press return, uh, and the installation process will start. Uh, you can see that there's a couple of messages up here about uh, auto capture keyboard and so forth. I usually get rid of these, uh, but you will, you should read these at some point because they will tell you how to configure it in so, the system in such a way that you can capture the cursor and the keyboard input uh, within Lubuntu and how to escape that if you so wish. Okay, so we're now in the proper uh, graphical user interface for the installer proper. Uh, so I select my language of installation again. Uh, I click continue. Uh, I'm prompted here to download updates. Now, I'm not going to bother to do the, doing this in this particular exercise, and I don't think you should bother either in, in college. But let's say that you were using a virtual machine over a long period of time, and that it was important that the, uh, the system was kept up to date. Now, this is certainly something that you would do, but I'm going to skip this. I'm, not, I'm neither going to select updates, nor am I going to install any third-party software. So I click Continue again. Uh, and then I come to a screen which sometimes uh, seems to cause our students a bit of anxiety because it's asking us, do we want to erase disk and install Lubuntu? Now, the disk that's been referred to here is not the actual physical hard drive on the computer that you're sitting at, but is the virtual disk that you created when you set up your virtual computer system. So the option that you're prevent presented with here uh, by default is the correct option. So it's important to stress you cannot uh, uh, raise you know, the host machine's disk. It's the guest computer system, the virtualized computer system, uh, that uh, whose disk you are going to erase uh, when you do this. So that's fine. We leave that as the default setting. There are other options there, but we don't need to worry about them. And we click Install Now. We get a final warning message, uh, which we'll just ignore because we've satisfied ourselves that uh, it's the virtual disk that's going to be overwritten. Uh, one of the great things about virtual machines is, of course, that you can make a complete mess of things and go, you know, it doesn't have any consequence. You just delete the virtual machine and start the process afresh with a clean virtual machine. Uh, and you can do that from scratch. Okay, so away we go. Uh, it detects that we're in Dublin. That's grand. Click continue. Uh, the text, the keyboard layer layout is Irish. Uh, I'm happy with that. And then it prompts me for a username. Uh, so I usually use my first name for this. I'm not going to bother changing the computer's name, but I am going to give myself a password. Uh, the password is obscured. I'm using a password here, test. Do not use your college password. Do not use a password that you're going to forget. Keep it nice and simple uh, and then click continue. Uh, and you can see that whilst we've been doing all of this, uh, entering passwords and so forth, uh, files have been copied over from the installation media, from the ISO image, uh, over to the virtualized disk. So we'll just wait a second uh, and hopefully this will be done quickly. Okay, cool. so I'm going to let this run on. Uh, I'll stop my recording here and we'll resume it in a second. Okay, so we've resumed recording and you can see that the installation process has now reached the end of the uh, whole complete installation. So you're prompted to restart uh, and you can do that now. Sometimes you'll see a message about ejecting the CD and that doesn't really make any sense because you didn't use a physical CD in order to actually install the operating system. But if you look down at the bottom of the virtual machine, you'll see that in the window uh, at the very bottom, there's different little icons that indicate uh, uh, status in regard of your virtualized computer. And one of those little icons 
is a little CD, a little DVD. So basically if it's colorized, then the virtualized machine thinks that there's a, a, an ISO image as, in, uh, associated with the virtual machine. And if it's grayscale as it is here, then that basically means that the drive is empty. So we can go ahead and restart now and we won't end up rebooting the system and having to reinstall the operating system or getting stuck into a second reinstallation. So I've clicked restart now uh, and uh, you can see the message about uh, removing the installation medium. So I know that that's not there because I've examined the VCD ROM at the bottom. Press return uh, and we reboot. Uh, and you can see the rebooting taking place. And we've rebooted and you can see that uh, the username that I gave earlier on uh, is provided and then I can type test, press return uh, and you can see that we've booted in uh, to uh, our virtualized machine, a virtualized installation of Lubuntu. So there are things that you can do here. Uh, so I think, for example, you can change the mode so that the desktop uh, it stretches, if you like. Uh, that's not wonderful. So you can play about with that. Uh, okay, I'm not sure actually how to do the change there. Uh, but you can make the desktop a little bit bigger. But for the moment, and in order to conclude the video, I'm just going to show you the interface that we'll be uh, working with, which isn't really the graphical user interface. That's just an added bonus, if you like, uh, for us. Uh, what we're actually going to look at is the terminal. So you hear people talking about Linux, and then you hear them talking about different types of Linux, like Red Hat, or CentOS, or Ubuntu, or Lubuntu, or Debian, and it gets a little bit confusing as to what is actually meant by Linux because you hear of all these different distributions. So the way to think of Linux is not so much in terms of the individual distributions or the different graphical user interfaces that they have, but to think in terms of the terminal. And that's what we'll be teaching you over the next few weeks. We won't be showing you too much of uh, the, the detail of the user interface, the graphical user interface, and instead it's this uh, device here that we'll be paying attention to, uh, or this software here, which is the uh, terminal. And as you'll be shown by your instructor, uh, you basically type in uh, the names of valid commands, you press return, and typically what you would see is some type of output being echoed to screen. So I've just typed two commands, date and cal, uh, and you can see uh, that they executed and that when they executed output uh, came uh, to the screen. So there's a lot more to be said about that uh, and uh, you'll become quite comfortable with these commands. Uh, you can see that I've just typed uh, a command tree and then I get a message back that says well tree's not currently installed and you can install it by uh, executing the command sudo or super user do apt install uh, tree. So that's what I'm going to do. Uh, what this basically will do is it will go out to the internet into a, a, a software repository that's full of uh, different uh, bits of software that you can install uh, and it will uh, uh, find the command tree and install it onto this uh, computer here. Uh, so I'm prompted for my password which is test. I press return and then you can see uh, that it downloads uh, the command tree and then if I press return uh, I'll type tree again and press return now you can see that I get an output from that uh, and that's basically it that's how you go about installing Lubuntu on a virtual uh, machine uh, it's worth pointing out that VirtualBox is kind of flaky uh, you're going to run into problems with it and sometimes the best thing to do uh, if you don't understand the messages and you can't get any sense from the internet as to what the message means, sometimes the best thing to do is just to delete the virtual machine in its entirety and start again from the very, very beginning. Uh, another thing that's very helpful in regard to VirtualBox is having enough RAM on your host machine, that's the actual physical machine, 
uh, and I would say to you that you know the more RAM you have, uh, the better uh, uh, your chances of having success with virtualized machines using VirtualBox. So good luck with your installation, uh, and that's the end of this video.